letting the ranger kill us. When you want to take damage in this game, you never do. Jeez, okay, actually we do. So if we drop the heal or far away from us, it heals us initially, and then we walk over to it, and then it get the final proc on us. So that's a good way to use your heal well. And let's just pop into the game here, and I'll see you guys in a second. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with gameplay. This is an updated Shadow Mesmer build guide, and I want to talk about a couple of things. So, number one, my videos will look a little bit better now because... I, I um, upgraded the recording software I use so I can record in full resolution and 60 FPS. Then, again, um, number two, we got diamond, finally. Ruby was, eh, it wasn't that hard to climb out of, to be honest. I just didn't play enough, but then I was about, like, I was sitting around one, tier one and two for quite a while. Didn't really make any gains here, and then one day we were in, like, 11 win streak, so we got up to, like, tier 4, then we just queued with the emerald friend to like tier 5 and a half, and we just won the rest. So, Ruby was pretty good, now we're in diamond, probably won't be able to get out of diamond, or maybe we can. I've gotten up to tier 3, like up here already, and then dropped back down. It's a bit iffy, you just need to go on a win streak pretty much, but that's that. So diamond, really happy about that. Also looks really cool whenever you PvE and everything like that as well. Looks a lot better than Ruby, that's for sure. I don't like Ruby, how it looked. Also, the pips in Diamond look amazing. Looks really nice. And then, Legendary's next. You can still get the backpack if you get Diamond this season and Ruby next season, I'm pretty sure. Or Ruby both seasons, can't remember. But here is our Power Shadow Mesmer. Uh, we've been playing this build since we got to Diamond, pretty much. So it's gotten us... Uh, let's check the match history. We're in a bit of a lost streak here, and then we've won a couple here. But, yeah, these were not really with Mesmer. Uh, we were just trying messing around with shit after we got to Diamond. But, yeah, with our Power Shadow Mesmer, we've only lost one game in the recent few games. And Mesmer is still my most played class. Yep. And so, Power Shadow Mesmer, I'll go through the build and everything in a second here. Let's open this up. Uh... Drag this over here, pop the traits up as well. So this is the build here, and we run sword and either shield or torch, depending on your playstyle. Torch is a very um, defensive weapon, or it can be used for offensive for engagers, but shield is much better as an offensive weapon. They both have a kind of number four skill, is um, very defensive, like it blocks or puts you in stealth. Uh, the stealth is obviously better than the block, but number five has a really good... Um, Stun and Quickness, which helps you set up a burst on a target really easily. And then Greatsword, of course. Greatsword with Air and Fire Sigil to increase your burst. And Sword Shield, or Sword Torch, with Air and Energy. So when you switch to it, you get an extra dodge. So this is our main burst, would be... Uh, there's a couple of bursts you can do. So obviously you have the ranged pressure. You just range your target down. And then you go in for a burst. But let's auto attack is not very strong. Maybe chuck a great sword three and two in there occasionally, just for a bit of extra damage. But the main damage you have comes from the great sword two, three, and F one. Pretty much every burst mesmer knows this. But there's an, a trait that we have here. Sorry for closing the traits. Um, called confounding suggestion. So the first daze we apply turns into a stun, and it happens to be that our uh, our F3 shadow is a daze, so this will actually stun the target. So a cool combo you can do, uh, stop auto-attacking, is blink up to a target, F3, and then you've got to have it clicked on. Uh, we'll wait till this guy does whatever he wants to do. So you blink up, daze, F3, you stun them, then you greatsword 2, 3, F1. And then I like to immediately cast greatsword 4 and shadow with cry of frustration afterwards. So if you saw what I did there, I blinked in and I popped my F3 shatter <coughs> to um, stun him so the target couldn't move. Obviously this is a bot so it can't move anyway. And then immediately I did Greatsword 2, 3 and F1 so that looks like this. Uh, so that was Greatsword 2 and I got a lightning strike and a flame strike proc and it hits twice and then you mind rack, mind rack, mind stab. This all happened within about a second if you saw that. So boom. That's the burst. I didn't. I missed quite a few crits there, if you saw. And I like to immediately cast Greatsword 4, because we would have quickness from our Seize the Moment trait. So let's show that off one more time again here. Wait till the light bot spawns, because it's the easiest. 
then we have quickness and we can spawn a greatsword four really quickly. So we actually have quite a bit of burst damage there. Mm. Also, apart from pistol pistol, this build has superior ranged pressure from the greatsword auto attack. And then you can jump in for a burst, like so. Also, you can, on your sword shield combo, I'll show that off in a second, but a great thing to do with sword is greatsword 3, 3, and then while they're immobilized, you pop your greatsword 2, and maybe an F1 as well. You can chuck an F1 in, and then continue to auto attack them down. But a good thing you can do with shield is um, shield 5, and then immediately switch to greatsword, and do the greatsword 2, 3, F1, because they'll be stunned, and you'll have quickness from the shield. So that's another great burst, but that's only if you choose to run shield. You can also run torch. Uh, where's the torch? So we can pop our torch four so target can't see us, then run up to a target and burst it as well. So there's another way to burst. Uh, this all becomes better with practice, so you just got to get one. I suggest that you practice your rotations on these bots up here while you're waiting in the queues. Um, utilities, we have the regular blink, decoy, and portal. You can't really change any of these out. Portal is too strong of a utility. It gives you too much map presence to leave it out. Uh, decoy for the Dukes and engages and disengages, similar to Torch 4. And Blink, of course. <laughs> you have to take Blink. But a cool thing you can do with Portal is Portal Stomp. I've shown this off in one of my other videos. But um, I'll just show it off again here. Why is there a trap there? i just pop a Gravity Well here. Gravity Well also does a lot of damage on this build if you can get the interrupts off. God, I, me I messed that up quite a bit. Okay, so you drop a portal first, then you start stomping, spam F. That's pretty much it. And you go back and stomp. You can also take the portal back, and then continue to roam off, and plus one fights. So yeah, the main role of this build is pretty much plus one in fights, and having map control and map presence. Also, your job is to pretty much push far, because you kind of take the role of thief, in a way, but you have more map control and map presence and burst and I love Mesmer more but um, and pretty much everyone hates Thief right now uh, but yeah you can also if you run shield and you can run into a point people will think you're a chrono bunk and you can like one shot them and they'll be like what the hell was that uh, this build does pretty badly against elementalists because you can't really burst them down very well uh, it does very well against squishy targets, revenants, necros uh, what else? Warriors. Not many warriors, though. The enemy thieves. You can also... Um, it does pretty well against Chrono Monk, surprisingly. You can sometimes win a 1v1. Uh, it does pretty well against Druid, as well, because they have barely any damage mitigation, apart from the Signet of Stone. And that's the stuff there, so here we go. So, um, Marauder Amulet, of course. Pack Rune. You can also take Scholar Rune for the extra burst. It actually has more burst than Pack Rune. But um, you can also take, what is it? I like Scrap Rune as well for a bit of extra toughness, because right now we have zero toughness. And it also reduces a bit of damage and gives us a bit of power. So, yep, Scholar has more burst. You can probably one-shot this bot here. Oh, no. We, miss, we missed a crit. But I prefer to take the Pack Rune for the Fury and the buffs that it gives us. And I'm not always above 90% health, but the Scholar Rune is the better option for damage. On to traits, Domination, Dueling, Chronomancer, of course. Domination, we have Confounding Suggestions, the trait I spoke about. So every 5 seconds, our daze is turned into a stun. So as I said before, you can blink, F3, and then 2, 3, F1. That's pretty much a main burst. F3, and then 2, 3, F1. It also gets vulnerability when you do that. And... That was a pretty good burst sequence I did there. You also get quickness on shatter, so you can get some pretty quick stomps off. If you use um, distortion well and you're blind on shatters, that helps you with stomps as well. But anyway, this whole trait line is basically based around vulnerability and interrupting. Uh, then, uh, yep, dazing applies vulnerability, that's why I have the 5 vulm for our first shatter. Then inflict vulnerability when you interrupt the foe, so if you interrupt them, and with this daze if you interrupt them, that's 8 stacks of vulnerability, so that is 8% more damage on your burst. And increased damage per stack by half a percent, so it's actually 12% more damage per burst if you were to get an interrupt off. Then Shadow Skulls remove a boon on hit, rate for boon removal of stability, protection, things like that. And then Power Block is really good because you have quite a few interrupts with your Diversion, Greatsword 5, Shield 5 if you choose to run it. 
and Gravity Well as well is really strong for the interrupts. Then we have Dueling, um, gain bigger when you crit, half 50% uh, uptime. Then Desperate Decoy, it kind of sometimes messes up your heal skills. Uh, but there's nothing, you can also take Phantasmal Fury if you don't like to take this. But I like Desperate Decoy because it's like a free disengage sometimes. Uh, pretty useless trait, a bit of Condi pressure that people might get scared of, but it doesn't really do any damage. Blinding on Shadow, really important. Uh, helps when you're stomping and also helps in 1v1s, but in team fights it doesn't do a whole lot. And we messed that up a bit there, but we got the stomp anyway. Okay, and then of course we have Master Fencer, which is permanent fury when we're striking an enemy below 75%. So we actually would have. Where is it? We'd be at like 74% crit chance or 79. So our crit chance is really high. Then of course Deceptive Evasion, you can't take anything else here. Create a clone when you dodge, great for Shadow Mez, great for any Mez build in my opinion. Then Chronomancer, we have activating a Shadow gives your illusion super speed. So if your illusions are far away, they can actually catch up to a target relatively quickly. Let's pop a decoy here, so these two illusions are, oh, this illusion is far away, and it will actually run to the ranger really quickly. Let's blink to him, greatsword 2 or 3, and F2 as well. If your F1's on cooldown, just use the F2 shadow, it still does a bit of damage, and it works. Okay, then, and then we have alacrity applied to you last longer. You gain alacrity when you shatter, where is that? Yes, gain alacrity one second per shatter, because it lasts 50% longer. And that just helps reducing your cooldown, especially if you have multiple illusions up. So you can get like 3 or 4 seconds of alacrity per shatter if you have your maximum amount of illusions up. I'll show that off here. Let's get all 3 up. Okay, so we have 3 illusions up and we're going to get alacrity for like 4 seconds there. Yep. And let's quickly just finish the warrior off. Auto attack pressure is also pretty strong on the build, so don't neglect it. Oh my god. And then of course... Um, time marches on is a really great trait for moving around the map. Helps with your plus ones because we don't have a lot of swiftness. We don't have any swiftness at all. It only comes from allies. Um, this helps you move around and reduces chill, cripple, and immobilize duration. Then, of course, quickness on shatter. Some mesmers like to take Chrono Phantasma. I used to take it, to be honest, but it's only good with our Greatsword 4, and that usually gets killed in most team fights. I prefer Chrono Phantasma in a 1v1, but seize the moment is overall better for the whole game. So that's the build and weapons and everything. I'll, t I'll show one last look at them. And again I did the pre-recorded gameplay thing so I'll do a voiceover for that. So here's the build, weapons, everything like that. And Diamond DA. Um, in the video I was at like two pips I think, maybe one pip. But just gotta practice your burst and you'll be good to go with this build pretty much. It's pretty simple if you play Mesma. Um, and with this, this is like the basic Mesma build pretty much. It's um, I have an old Power Shadow Mez build on my channel, which is before Heart of Thorns, so this is like an updated version of that. Uh, I hate when the bots do that block thing. Also you can get two gravity walls off if you use your Continuum Split, but apart from that, whenever you Continuum Split you want to spam all your shadows because they'd come back anyway. And that's that pretty much. Um, heal while removes conditions, so that's your Condi clear. And you can do this cool thing. Let's take damage purposely here, so I'll show that off. Just letting the ranger kill us. When you want to take damage in this game, you never do. Jeez, okay, actually we do. So if we drop the heal while far away from us, it heals us initially, and then we walk over to it, and then it get the final proc on us. So that's a good way to use your heal well. And let's just pop into the game here, and I'll see you guys in a second. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with gameplay. This is an updated Shadow Mesma build guide. And I want to talk about a couple of things. So, number one, my videos will look a little bit better now because I, I um, upgraded the recording software I use, so I can record in full resolution and 60 FPS. Then, again, um, number two, we got Diamond, finally. Ruby was... Yeah, it wasn't that hard to climb out of, to be honest. I just didn't play enough, but then I was about, like, I was sitting around 1, tier 1 and 2 for quite a while. Didn't really make any gains here, and then one day we are in, like, 11 win streak, so we got up to, like, tier 4. Then we just queued with the Emerald Friend to, like, tier 5 and a half, and we just won the rest. So, 
Ruby was pretty good, now we're in Diamond. Probably won't be able to get out of Diamond, or maybe we can. I've gotten up to Tier 3, like up here already, and then dropped back down. It's a bit iffy, you just need to go on a win streak pretty much, but that's that. So Diamond, really happy about that. Also looks really cool whenever you PvE and everything like that as well. <laughs> looks a lot better than Ruby, that's for sure. I don't like Ruby, how it looked. Also the pips in Diamond look amazing, looks really nice. And then... Legendaries next. You can still get the backpack if you get Diamond this season and Ruby next season, I'm pretty sure. Or Ruby both seasons, can't remember. But here is our Power Shadow Mesmer. Uh, we've been playing this build since we got to Diamond, pretty much, so it's gotten us... Uh, let's check the match history. We're in a bit of a lost streak here, and then we've won a couple here. But, yeah, these were not really with Mesmer. Uh, we were just trying messing around with shit after we got to Diamond, but yeah, with our Power Shadow Mesmer, we've only lost one game in the recent few games. And Mesmer is still my most played class, yep. And so, Power Shadow Mesmer, I'll go through the build and everything in a second here. Let's open this up. Uh, drag this over here, pop the traits up as well. So this is the build here, and we run Sword and either shield or torch depending on your playstyle. Torch is a very um, defensive weapon or it can be used for offensive for engages but shield is much better as an offensive weapon. They both have a kind of number four skill is um, very defensive like it blocks or puts you in stealth. Uh, the stealth is obviously better than the block but number five has a really good um, stun and quickness which helps you set up a burst on a target really easily. And then greatsword of course. Greatsword with air and fire sigil to increase your burst and sword shield or sword torch with air and energy so when you switch to it you get an extra dodge so this is our main burst would be uh, there's a couple of bursts you can do so obviously you have the ranged pressure you just range a target down and then you go in for a burst but let's auto attack is not very strong maybe chuck a great sword three and two in there occasionally just for a bit of extra damage but the main damage you have comes from the Greatsword 2, 3, and F1. Pretty much every Burst Mesmer knows this. But there's an, a trait that we have here, sorry for closing the traits, um, called Confounding Suggestion. So the first daze we apply turns into a stun, and it happens to be that our, uh, our F3 Shatter is a daze, so this will actually stun the target. So a cool combo you can do, uh, stop auto-attacking, is blink up to a target, F3, and then You've got to have it clicked on. Uh, we'll wait till this guy does whatever he wants to do. So you blink up, days F3, you stun them, then you Greatsword 2, 3, F1. And then I like to immediately cast Greatsword 4 and Shadow with Cry of Frustration afterwards. So if you saw what I did there, I blinked in and I popped my F3 Shadow <coughs> to um, stun him so the target couldn't move. Obviously this is a bot so it can't move anyway. And then immediately I did Greatsword 2, 3 and F1 so that looks like this. Uh, so that was Greatsword 2, and I got a Lightning Strike and a Flame Strike proc, and it hits twice, and then you Mind Rack, Mind Rack, Mind Stab. This all happened within about a second, if you saw that. So, boom, that's the burst. I didn't, I missed quite a few crits there, if you saw. And I like to immediately cast Greatsword 4, because we would have quickness from our Seize the Moment trait. So let's show that off one more time again here. Wait till the Light Bot spawns, because it's the easiest. Then we have Quickness, and we can spawn a Greatsword 4 really quickly. So we actually have quite a bit of burst damage there. Mm. Also, apart from Pistol Pistol, this build has superior ranged pressure from the Greatsword Auto Attack. And then you can jump in for a burst, like so. Also, you can, on your Sword Shield combo, I'll show that off in a second, but a great thing to do with Sword is Greatsword 3, 3, and then while they're immobilized, you pop your Greatsword 2, and maybe an F1 as well. You can chuck an F1 in and then continue to auto attack them down. But a good thing you can do with shield is um, shield 5 and then immediately switch to greatsword and do the greatsword 2, 3, F1 because they'll be stunned and you'll have quickness from the shield. So that's another great burst but that's only if you choose to run shield. You can also run torch. Uh, where's the torch? So we can pop our torch 4 so target can't see us, then run up to a target and burst it as well. So there's another way to burst. 
Uh, this all becomes better with practice, so you just got to get. Um, I suggest that you practice your rotations on these bots up here while you're waiting in the queues. Um, utilities, we have the regular blink, decoy, and portal. You can't really change any of these out. Portal is too strong of a utility. It gives you too much map presence to leave it out. Uh, decoy for the dukes and engages and disengages, similar to Torch 4. And blink, of course. <laughs> you have to take blink. But a cool thing you can do with portal is portal stomp. I've shown this off in one of my other videos. But um, I'll just show it off again here. Why is there a trap there? I just pop a gravity well here. Gravity well also does a lot of damage on this build. If you can get the interrupts off, God, I, me I messed that up quite a bit. Okay, so you drop a portal first, then you start stomping. Spam F. That's pretty much it. You go back and stomp. You can also take the portal back, and then continue to roam off and plus one fights. So yeah, the main role of this build is pretty much plus one in fights and having map control and map presence. Also, your job is to pretty much push far because you kind of take the role of a thief in a way. But you have more map control and map presence and burst, and I love Mesmer more. But, um, and pretty much everyone hates Thief right now. Uh, but yeah, you can also, if you run shield and you can run into a point, people will think you're a chrono bunk and you can like one shot them and they'll be like, what the hell was that? Uh, this build does pretty badly against elementalists because you can't really burst them down very well. Uh, it does very well against squishy targets, revenants, necros, uh, what else? Warriors. Not many warriors, though. The enemy thieves. You can also. Um, it does pretty well against Chrono Monk, surprisingly. You can sometimes win a 1v1. Uh, it does pretty well against Druid as well, because they have barely any damage mitigation apart from the Signet of Stone. And that's the stuff there, so here we go. So, um, Marauder Amulet, of course. Pack Rune. You can also take Scholar Rune for the extra burst. It actually has more burst than Pack Rune. But um, you can also take, what is it, Skylar? Hey, we're in game here trying out some recording thing. This is pretty weird. I've never done it before, but we're using Sony Vegas new editing software and new recording software, so hopefully things are a little bit better. But we're on the Power Shadow Mesmer solo queue starting mid. We had a guy switch at the start of the game. I actually know this guy, funnily enough. And we're going to push far because we see a bunker early at mid, and we're just going to wait for this necro to leave. And we're going to push far. This probably wasn't the best idea. So, um, yeah, this was pre-recorded, so I know what's going to happen and all that. I dropped a portal at mid, though, however, just in case I need to go back, because I'm not too confident with 1v1 in Condi necros. Uh, in team fights, you can easily burst them down, but in 1v1s, it's not too powerful, especially when you make a misplay like I just did and misplace your gravity well. We got a little bit of a decent burst off on him, he's below 50%, and we're going to go stealth up, and we're going to have to drop a gravity well, and he didn't actually get caught in it. If, he, if, if we caught him in the gravity well just there, we probably could have secured the 1v1, but we have to blink off. And we're going to portal back mid. We see there's a well there as soon as we portal back, but mid is lost as well, it looks like. So we're going to head back to far. Oh, jeez. And uh, our team actually came to plus one far, so that's good. They left disengaged mid, and we're going to knock the Necro back. Got a nice interrupt off on him there, and got a little bit of a burst off, but we had weakness and we got Condi bombed. So we're going to peel off a bit here and heal up first before going back in. The Necro is still pretty healthy though, so we can't really do a whole lot just yet. I'm going to range pressure and blink over to the side because we see the Necro coming towards us. We try to blink over. We see our team is disengaging here, but one is down as well. We're going to try and get a, um, a res. And we're going to pull off here and go back to mid. Uh, we, you can blink up to mid with Mesmer, so that's very useful, but on this part we didn't. We're going to drop a heal while there, drop it ahead of us like I showed off before. And we're actually going to head up back over to far because mid is decapped. And there's a really low necker on far, but this was a bit of a misplay as well because they have full, fully um, healed up Ellie, and we have it downed over there, so that wasn't the best. Mm, the necker is really low though, we can maybe get a play off here. I, I actually really like this, you can see that here. So I'm going to do the portal stomp where I drop the portal, start stomping, and then spam F and get back. So we got the stomp there. Then we're currently behind on points, but we're going to come up to mid here, and mid is capped. Uh, home is not looking um, bad, and far is open, so we're going to go over there to far. Hopefully the Necro is not going to come back straight away. 
but yeah, so it's your job to really lay pressure down on far and plus one fights, but sitting far is also pretty good. Uh, so we see one incoming here, Necro again, gonna get a bit worried about that one. Uh, this is a very hard fight to win for us, especially if he has a, a high amount of life force. We got out of his, um, Chilbane's mark, luckily, and we got a bit of damage pressure on him. And our team is incoming, so we're gonna daze him here and drop a gravity well there. We dropped our continuum split and we got CC to all hell, so we couldn't drop any gravity wells there. But we still have it up, but we missed an opportunity for a big burst. We're going to drop range pressure on the point, then another gravity well over there. We didn't catch him in that one, and the point is still decapped, so we're essentially winning. We're like we're doing our job, but they finally capped the point, so it's probably time to pull off here. I'm going to drop a portal there just so I can come back later. So that's another great thing you can do. You can drop portals near far. I've done this in so many games. It helps so much. Because they, when they leave far to come mid to chase you, um, you actually have the advantage because you have a portal there. And we're just going to down this Angie really quickly. He's already going to go down, actually. So let's go back up to mid. I don't know why I started stomping this. It was a bit of a misplay. But we're going to head back up to mid. Call target always call targets on this build as well, it's very important. We got a shatter on the Mez, and we checked to see if far is empty through the window, and we portaled back straight there. The Necro left a mark on our portal, but that's not enough to stop us. It doesn't really do a whole lot. And we're going to decap this and then start capping it. Uh, we see the Necro coming towards us, I'm pretty sure we cap the point before he gets here though. Do we? Oh, no we don't here, but it was really close. And another one is coming in, so we're going to have to pull off with no portal this time, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna, I tried to jump on the roof of that house, but again, place the well in front of us, and we're going to try and hop around back up to mid. Our whole team is at home, but the Mesmer dropped a portal on mid. I didn't know that at the time, though, so I had to go up to mid to check. And then I'm going to go check home. I see that they have one home and there's an Ellie coming. It's pointless for me to jump on the Ellie, so I'm going to stay at mid, knock them back a bit. Try and get a little burst off on the NG. We got quite a good burst there on the NG. And we're going to drop our well, I believe. Yep. And we got one down there. So that was a pretty good catch on that Mesmer as well. And we're going to stomp him there and head out to far. Uh, so we're just going to pop open the chest we got here. And even if they do come far, we have our portal ready. So we can do the portal thing where we annoy them at far. So you see, whenever we win our fights, we always go off to far. That's a pretty good rotation. Most classes should do that. We see a warrior here. Um, this is a pretty good 1v1. I got a really nice burst off at the start there. We're going to drop a safety portal just in case we need to activate it or do a portal stomp. So you have to sometimes do that as well. Going to go into stealth here and then drop a gravity well, which we actually catch him in because he comes back into. And we got a nice big shatter off there with some auto attack pressure. And we didn't need to use the portal stump because we were hiding behind a clone, so his CC wouldn't actually hit us. So we got a good 1v1 there at far, won the point, and it looks like our team is winning the rest of the fights. So that puts us in the lead for now. Just going to check the points here while we wait. And that's going pretty well. You shouldn't die on this build as well because you have so many disengages. Like if you're losing a fight, just disengage the fight. Don't do anything stupid. And we see an NG coming up here. I'm pretty sure we get a good burst on the NG here as well. And our Mesmer drops a gravity well. We have two Mesmers. And I'm going to go stealth. Uh, our Mesmer goes down really quickly though, so this looks like a lost fight. I still have my portal over there from before, from the warrior. But we're going to have to disengage here. This is pretty lost. We're going to do a sneaky little trick here, and we see them coming, so we're going to drop a portal behind this house where they can't see it. And then head over to mid. And... We've actually capped mid, I wanted to try and get a tag on that kill. We're going to hide behind here so they can't see us again, and juke back. So that was a pretty nice play. I actually made a little bit of a misplay by attempting to attack this Necro. I should have just gone straight far. Luckily he didn't see that though, and he didn't turn around, so that's fine. And we're going to just stand on here, cap the point. Again, we're pressuring far. I thought it would be better for me to decap the point here and then help out mid, but it looks like mid is fine, so... We're just going to sit here for a little bit. This is a Chrono, um, sorry, not a Chrono, a Bunker Ellie. We don't do very well against Bunker Ellies because we just simply can't kill them. Don't put out enough damage pressure, especially if it's a Staff Ellie. 
We tried to burst him down here a bit. We got a little bit of damage off, but it's not, not nowhere near enough. We got another gravity off. Then greatsword 2, 3, F1. Burst him down to about 50%, then we have to pull off. I can't really win that fight. I tried a little bit more, because mid is lost, so there's no way really for me to rotate right now. I can't get all the way to home. And I'm going to go to mid anyway. It would be good if I had my blink up now. I didn't waste any of that fight, so I could blink up to mid, but... This gives the enemy team a chance to catch up a little bit from our lead. We had about a f 100 point lead before. Now it's going down slowly. I'm going to burst this Mesmer. We've got a good burst off on the Mesmer there. And going to pull off for a bit here. Disengage, try and down the Mesmer with range pressure. And burst him. We were really going for this kill here just so we could get the, get the downed. Downing a Mesmer first is quite important because... Um, then they can't res a stomp. I was going really low there, so I dropped my portal off to the side of the point, and then we're just going to self-res. Um, we're lucky that someone didn't come down here. That doesn't always work, but you should sometimes drop a safety portal before going into a dangerous fight, especially on mid here, because you can't really run away very easily. And then we see a low warrior. We're just going to get the warrior down and chase. I messed up this bit here, because I got stunned in the static, but we're going to get him... We're going to get the res on this... Ally, we got knocked back, but we do get the res. Gonna have to drop a gravity well so the Ellie doesn't stomp. Then go for the res again. That was a continuum split gravity well, so we still have one. I thought I got the res there because it looked like his health went all the way up, but we stopped. We got another gravity well off on the Ellie, and then we got back up. Gonna heal up a bit and then pressure fire once again. The revenant's coming with me as well, so that's good. We can we can win this fight. Um, 2v1 is very easy for us because, again, that's like plus one in the fight. That's what we should be doing. You can only win 1v1s against weaker classes or bad opponents. Like a really good, um, uh, re a really good of any class could pretty much beat a 1v1 Shadow Mesma. Uh, we can beat Thieves pretty easily, actually, no matter their skill level. Mesma, I love Mesma a lot more than Thief. But yeah, we got the Stomp here where. The enemy team almost caught up on our lead, and we're actually only about 20 points ahead now, a bit less, and we're going to burst the Mez quite a bit, dodge his um, shield 5 with our sword 2, so you've got to watch out for things like that. Um, having the blocks against the Mesmer is really annoying. We just popped our portal to troll him a little bit here, that was not necessary, but it also gives us a really quick way to pull out of the fight and then come back in, so we got that off. He dropped a gravity wall just before he died. And we won this fight. And we're just going to sit up far for a little while here. Because we have mid and we don't have home. But I'm just going to ping home there. Going to let the Mesmer bleed out a bit. But then we see another one coming. So we have to kill him. This warrior 1v1 didn't go too well. I made a few misplays. He popped all his defensive skills here. So I couldn't really do it much. I had to pop all my defensive skills as well. Because... He still puts out a lot of damage, also got taunted there because he went into that form, and we dodged his, um, he didn't land his, what's it called, Gunflame, yeah, Gunflame, and we we would have won that fight pretty much if he went to the gravity well, it was really close to us there, I was really close to him, sorry, and then they come in with the two, v, two people against us, we're going to give them the point here, because we captured home, so that's, that's a good trade, we're going to go down right at the end, just before we win the game. We're at 475, they're lower than us, we secured the game pretty much. And gonna tell the team. So yeah, sometimes when you have mid and home you have to give up far, it's rare that you triple cap. But it can happen, so don't disregard it, and we're just gonna get the win here, there's nothing we can do. Let's do a little dance. And we actually managed to somehow dance with our weapon out, which is weird, so it looks really funny. And yeah, we were a bit lower. Uh, so yeah, um, got a win for that. Pretty good win. That was a solo queue match. The matchmaking is a lot better now, thanks to the um, PvP fix they